Now, their side keeps saying that we do not need this, these many troops for war. That is true. But we're not drafting troops for war. We are, we are having people and we are training them to be better citizens in, and better people. Now, the cost issue. Yes, it would be expensive at first. But all this money that we are putting into these is going to go straight back into the economy as soon as they get out. All this money, they're going to start buying things. Now, now you have 18-year-old kids that have $1,200 in their pocket a month. These kids are not going to just sit on this money. This money is going to go back into the economy. Education-wise, um, our education is not just after the military. When you're in the military, you receive free education. You can go get education from the best college professors in the world. That we, and it is 100% free for you. And our training is not just uh, that during that nine month period, is, or, or six month period as they were saying, it's not just for your fighting. This is for your, your military occupational specialty. Now this could be anything from, from being a combat, uh, someone in charge of a, rif a rifleman. Or you could be a nuclear sub submarine worker. You could be working on nuclear materials. You could be a combat engineer building bridges. There's so many different things that are helpful for people in the United States that we can that the military can train, and they have the best training in the world right now. And we can use this and help people get jobs as soon as they get out. And this, they will receive money, and that will go right back into the economy. Now, they were saying that other conscription was important for small countries that have, have war and enemies on the outside. But why is it that countries such as Germany and Finland have conscription then? These countries aren't, don't have any immediate enemies right now. They're using these, this buildup to, to, to try to motivate their own people and make their people better to serve, to serve their own countries. Now, they were saying the Selective Service Act. The Selective Service Act is only for males right now. When females do not apply. And they also said they don't allow females in some circumstances. Well, that is true. Because, believe it or not, <coughs> females are not always capable of doing the same thing as males. It sounds bad, but females just aren't built the same way. You cannot do as much heavy lifting as, as males can. It's anatomy. It's just time, again, has shown. Now, there, there, a quote from the Professor Grossman that 80% did not want to be drafted, and it, is immoral. <coughs> it was immoral. Well, this is one person's value, and this is that one person's value of what is moral and what is not. I'm sure that you can, this argument cannot be used as a general argument for the rest of the people, just because, because one person that has that value. <coughs> If we were to have this um, this mili select military service, then they were saying that there's a high cost for recruitment already. This cost will go down. We are now have we don't need to recruit as much if we are having a constant influx of influx of soldiers. So, yes, at first. It might not be cost effective, but later, as soon as people get out, the money goes right back into the economy, and we'll begin supporting the United States and making the, strengthening the, the economy of the U.S. <coughs>